Welcome back to Up Close. This has been a memorable year in New York politics. We'll start with the city of New York. Mayor Bloomberg spent more than $100 million of his own money on his campaign for a controversial third term. He won by just five points. That's approaching $200 a vote. Veteran county executives throughout the area got the boot. They got a boot in Westchester County, in Nassau County. And we almost had another Senator Kennedy. Then there's Albany. Please, take it. A pair of Democratic state senators staging something of a coup and virtually freezing up state government for most of the summer. So, what will 2010 bring? We have some prognosticators with us today. Joining us is Lee Mirangoff. He's with Marist College Poll. And Daily News columnist Errol Lewis. He's also the host of WWRL's radio's The Morning Show. That's just the name of it, right? Yes, the indeed. The Morning Show. You're not, a, you're not a, a shock jock, though. You're a political Oh, jock. no, no, no. I information, news, debate, and opinion. And you're liking this, right? Being Love a radio it. host. Love it. Except it gets up really early, and in academia, we try to avoid that. <laughs> right. It could, well, you've got to stay up late counting poll numbers. That's, That's correct. Polls so, just come out at night. We just heard Governor Patterson, and, and he's really, you know, waging a war is what he's doing. This is a political war on his part. Um, it's fairly early in the campaign, but he's got a lot of ground to make up. How far behind is he, Lee? Well, he's got, uh, the problem for him is in two words, Andrew Cuomo. Uh, the Democrat Democratic primary, if there is one, looms large. His numbers are getting a little bit better. Patterson's are. Uh, he's got a long way to go. Um, and uh, we'll see what happens down the road. Uh, right now, he's done some ads. They've had some impact. He's filling somewhat of a leadership void now, being uh, more visible, talking a little tougher on the debt. So I think he's doing some of the things he needs to do, but his numbers have been rock bottom up until this point. But the ads have been a little bit effective. His numbers have gone up slightly. A little bit. And little bit. is it because of the ads, because of how he's handling the economic crisis, both, neither? I'd say a little bit of both. I mean, the, the, the ads and the, the tough talk go hand in hand. People seem to like it. He's never more popular than when he's pulling the punch bowl away from, from, uh, from uh, services and spending in the state. Um, at night, though, he started this um, conversations with the governor sort of tour. I went to the first of them in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, to see 700 people on their feet cheering. No governor had ever come to some little church to talk to people in the neighborhood that way before. Um, he's, he's building a base. He's making a very strong case for himself. And I think that that is where you see some of the confidence. I mean, he's, he's really hit his stride politically. He's been operating with a certain amount of confidence that you haven't seen before. Yeah, that's true. And um, he's, his, his campaign is well underway. But when he first became governor, his numbers were in the 50s. Then they cascaded to lower than Elliot Spitzer's were during the height of his sex scandal crisis so now coming back well he's got nowhere to go but up at this point he is a likable guy I mean before he became governor people liked him he's mm -hmm. smart he's funny he's clearly you know overcome a lot uh, to become to be to be where he is today. yeah one of his key tools is the the fact that people underestimate him and he even kind of uh, gets at that in his commercials yep. you know that and and I mean I'm, frankly look I I happen to be at his swearing in well, when he won a special election back in, I think, 1985. And people have been us underestimating him almost continuously since then as he became Senate Minority Leader and then Senate, you know, well, well, arranged it so that the Democrats could take the majority and became a lieutenant well, governor and now governor. You said, Lee, if there is a Democratic primary for governor. Well, that's the big question. I mean, Andrew Cuomo is the most popular statewide elected official right now. Uh, approval rings almost 70 percent. Um, does he want to become Governor Cuomo? I know they have a lot of probably old bumper stickers in their closet that say that. <laughs> Re-elect. Dust well, those off. If you had to bet, uh, bet your mortgage, what would you say? Uh, I don't want to bet the mortgage, but I bet he probably does toss his hat in. I yeah. wouldn't bet anywhere near the $20 million that Andrew Cuomo has raised uh, that, yeah, he's going to probably run for governor. Mm -hmm. And money money talks in the state, as we saw with the Mayor Bloomberg race, yeah, yeah. right? And yeah, he only oh, won by 5% of the vote. Well, yeah. something to keep in mind, 70% approval ratings for the mayor. Yeah. And in the end, the fact that people liked his performance was significantly disconnected from yeah. those who said that they were going to vote but for such it. an anti-incumbent year this year was uh, and it was a tough year for Democrats I mean we're looking ahead to 2010 there's gonna be six statewide offices up for grabs who are the Republicans gonna field for all these offices I mean I think the Democrats are hurting a little bit they were in November maybe next year won't be a great year for the Democrats in the off-year election but who are the Republicans gonna field they need some marquee names to get in and right now that hasn't happened yet and that might counter the throw the bums out mentality that a lot of people have right now well that's right I mean uh, you, you really can't beat somebody with nobody, although they came pretty close in some of these races <laughs> uh, out in Nassau County in particular. Ed Mangano, I mean, nobody gave him a chance. Nobody knew who he was, mm -hmm. and he's going to have a, a, a bit of a time putting together an administration with some credibility, but statewide, there's there's nobody like that. Well, there is someone named Rudy Giuliani. Rudy, I was just going to say that. Rudy Giuliani is waiting in the wings, potentially not going to run for governor, apparently, may run for the Senate against Kirsten Gillibrand. In our latest numbers, 54-40, 
funny mm. set of numbers. Uh, for, for Giuliani, so in, in essence, he could be a very strong U.S. Senate candidate if he wants to get in. I mean, he keeps his own counsel. Who knows what he's going to do? Schumer, Senator Schumer and Gillibrand will run both in next yeah. year. Yes. Uh, Schumer for his own seat, Gillibrand yeah. for the special seat, uh, the unexpired term of Hillary That's Clinton. Right. Um, the Democrats are going to pour money into Gillibrand's campaign, I imagine. Well, I think that look, the White House has sort of cleared the field for her. Uh, there may still be the primary challenge. Bill Thompson's been talking about possibly doing that. I mean, Gillibrand is very vulnerable. It would be a huge embarrassment for the White House uh, if somewhere down the line that seat got lost in this Democratic majority. And, and give her a little credit, she helped clear the field herself. Yeah, she she's, a, she's a pretty good fundraiser, and so yeah. she may not need all that much help yeah. from the National Democrats. Five seconds, hate to do this to you. Bill Thompson, future in politics, he was impressive in the campaign. Absolutely, right? if he wants it. If he wants it, and uh, statewide. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Lee Marigoff, Errol Lewis, I told you it was going to go by quickly, right? <laughs> I wish we had another half hour. We do not, though, because that's it for this edition of Up Close. We thank you for watching. If you missed any of today's programs, no problem. You can catch it again on our website, 24-7, 7online.com. Thank you all for watching. For all of us here at Channel 7, I'm Bill Ritter. Enjoy the rest of your weekend.